Believe it or not, we are now heading into the final week of October. I know, I'm standing out here in a t-shirt and jeans, no jacket, no hoodie, and my neighbour is across the road mowing their yard. I'm sorry about that, they always seem to do that when I'm filming. But don't let that deceive you. It is now October. We had our first frost this morning, and I had to bring the last of my pumpkins inside to prevent them from being frost damaged. And of course, at the end of October, we think about Halloween. And so this week on the channel, we're going to be talking some Halloween themed things. So let's start that off with a charging station that has come back from the dead. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really work when it's nice and sunny and bright, does it? For those who don't know, these are my juice box charging stations. They are juice box version one charging stations originally made by eMotorworks. And if you've watched this channel in the last couple of weeks, you'll know that there's a huge debacle going on right now because the company that purchased eMotorworks a couple of years ago, NLX, and then stopped these charging stations from working as they were originally designed, has now said that it's withdrawing from the US and that means it's no longer going to support these charging stations. The app that was terrible, that never worked with these charging stations, at least I never got them to work, forced these charging stations, instead of being smart and intelligent and load sharing into a very basic safe mode that meant that even though these charging stations are technically capable of delivering up to 40 amps to an EV for level two charging, both of these were stuck at 15 amps. You may have seen the interview, the chat that we did on the channel a couple of weeks ago with some of the folks around the Juice Rescue Project, which is aiming to bring these charging stations back from their, their purgatory of being stuck at 15 amps each, and instead giving them back some of their smart charging capabilities using a fantastic project called the Juice Pass Proxy, which has been around for a while, and also using Home Assistant and other cool stuff. There is also a separate branch of that project that is also seeking to put open EVSE hardware into these units. And originally that was my plan. When these units started to misbehave, when NLX said, <laughs> you're on your own, the charging stations were fine, but I didn't want to rip these off and put a new charging station on the wall, which is wasteful and not very good and probably would have ended up with the same similar situation down the road. So I had decided I was going to put open EVSE hardware in and we took this charging station off the wall. Um, well, sorry, it was this charging station. We took this charging station off the wall. We tinkered with it and I was about to put the guts in when the juice rescue project happened. So I was like, hey, I'm just going to hold off. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to wait and see what happens. And I'm really glad I did. So Chris Howell, who is part of the Open EVSE project, is working on a drop in replacement for the first generation juice boxes. That means you'll be able to open these up, take out the original uh, eMotorworks controller board and put in a new one. It's not going to happen like immediately. It's coming. And I'm super excited about that. The second thing is that thanks to revisions to the Juice Pass proxy, which is now at version 0.2.2, I have finally got it so that these two charging stations can communicate with servers in my home and I can dynamically load share again. Yeah, and my neighbor's cutting brush. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, let me show you a demonstration. Now, why this is not a, a how-to video is, is very simple. To get these two things to work has taken me a couple of weeks. Uh, additionally, this, this unit right now is not working. It was working two or three days ago. I got the, the two charging stations to work and it was great, uh, but now this one is no longer talking to the server I set up for it. It's not this unit's fault, it's my networking foo is not very strong. So over the weekend, I need to put this on a separate network and then hopefully I'll be able to get this and the server talking, this and its respective server talking just fine.
which is where I, future Nikki, come in. We edited this video before the weekend, but on Saturday and Sunday, I was able to make so much progress on my own installation that I just wanted to share this screen recording. It is showing me plugging in one EV into the shared juice boxes and that one charging station using the maximum allowable current for the pair of charging stations, 40 amps. Then I plug in a second EV and the charging stations automatically drop down to share the load between them. And at the end, I unplug one of my charging stations from a vehicle, leaving the other one to ramp back up again. This is essentially the kind of functionality that my juice box has had from new out of the box before NLX came along and screwed the pooch. It's not ready for prime time yet. It's still very messy and very in-depth to get it all to work. And my particular installation is quite buggy. And I'm not talking about the stink bugs on the outside of my house. It's complicated and it took me basically all weekend to get it working. I want to give a shout out to Steve in Wa. Stephen Washington, who on the Discord channel for Transport Evolved suggested that I looked into VLAN setups for Unraid, which is what I use for the dockers that run Juice Pass Proxy. Thanks, Steve. You were the reason I finally got it working. Combined with using VLANs on my Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro, which most home consumers don't have or know how to work. Because of those two things, and because I was able to set up custom DNS entries, I was able to get these two juice boxes talking independently from one another to two separate servers, and then to pull all that data into Home Assistant and then use a custom card, which is what you're seeing right now. I'll put all the links in the description that allowed me to set up this demonstration. And then I used custom automations that I wrote myself to make sure that when one charging station was plugged in, it got the maximum allowable current. But as soon as a second one plugged in, the current was reduced. I would love to show you a, a how to, but at this point, it's not ready and the amazing team at Juice Rescue and Juice Pass Proxy and all the other projects that are pulling together to make this happen. I just know that something amazing is coming down the line, so don't throw those juice boxes out yet. And mine are working, yay! I'm really happy about this. Uh, you can see that the red light here is showing that it's charging, so, and the car is charging. And it's really nice to know that thanks to an amazing group of people who are giving their own free time to this project, it is now possible to regain control of your juice boxes. Don't worry. As soon as everything is really easy, I'll do a, a how-to video. Right now, I'm not ready to do that because if I show you how to do this and you get it wrong, then uh, bad things could happen to me, bad things could happen to you, and I'm not prepared to share that. But if you know what DNS masking is, if you know how to do port forwarding, if you know how to block devices from going out and calling home on the internet, if you know how to do, effectively it's spoofing of, of this official server with something on your own network, then it's now at a point where you can set this up. And that means if people have figured out how to do it here, it's only a matter of time. Back from the dead, in time for Halloween. Go and support the project and don't reach out for that new charging station just yet. Oh, and several of you have gone, oh, well, I'll, I'll install my juice box. You may just wanna hold off until it's all working properly and everyone is happy. And alternatively, keep your eyes open for the drop-in replacement for the open EVSE, because that is another roadmap that allows you to reuse. <laughs> These are really well-made units. They've got great cables, they've got great um, plugs, it's a great way of getting them back on the road. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, yes, these used to be in the garage. 
um, and we used to snake the cables out underneath. But my wife is turning the garage into a proper woodworking shop. We've insulated the walls since we bought the house and we basically drilled some holes in. We put some new cabling in. And so these are now sitting on the outside of the house. This is all weatherproofed and properly insulated so no bugs can get in. Everything is to code. It's all good and uh, it now means that I can charge things a little bit more easily. So earlier this week we had the Ford F-150, a Hummer EV charging, uh, Kate Walton Elliott's Kia e Nero and two Chevrolet Bolts all charging at the same time which was brilliant. So make sure you subscribe because there's going to be more content coming on this, I guarantee it. Thanks for joining me today and if you've got some thoughts make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room, our Patreon page or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers that you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters. Alan Brim, Jim, Sarah Horlock, full name, Todd Johnson, Roderick, Stuart de Spain, Rupert Ronson, Larry Phoenix, Dala, Wendy Kelly Buddenbaum and Kay. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address also linked below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. Don't forget that Halloween is coming and we've got some great designs for the season. We've also got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think this one is well worth a look. See you soon and as always, keep evolving!